Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 9 on counting. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about generalized pigeon hole principle. Now, before going for this pigeon hole principle, we require one definition of ceiling function. So, first we understand that definition and then we will discuss this principle. So, we require this uh, definition of ceiling function, but before that we understand this uh, floor function. The floor function assigns to the real number x the largest integer that is less than or equal to x. The value of the floor function at x is denoted by this notation. So, this floor function is nothing but the greatest integer function which you study in your school classes. And uh, we just recall that this uh, greatest integer function or floor function. Suppose we have this real line. So, suppose I consider some real number x here, then floor function or greatest integer function is denoted by this notation or this notation and this is equal to the largest integer that is less than or equal to x or greatest integer less than or equal to x greatest integer less than or equal to x for example suppose we consider x equal to 1.7 then uh, we have to concentrate on those integers which are less than or equal to 1.7 so the integers which are less than 1.7 Suppose 1.7 is somewhere here, are 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 and so on. There are infinite number of integers which are less than 1.7. Out of these infinite number of integers, we have to find out the greatest integer which is 1 here. Therefore, the floor function assigns 1 value to 1.7. Now suppose my x is integer, for example x equal to minus 1, then the greatest integer less than or equal to minus 1 is minus 1 itself. So the value of floor function at any integer is that integer itself. So this floor function or greatest integer function is defined in this way. Now we have another function which is known as ceiling function and it is denoted by this notation okay. floor, for floor function we are using this notation for ceiling function we use this notation so it is defined exactly in opposite manner floor function is defined as greatest integer less than or equal to x so negative statement here we will write greatest uh, opposite word of greatest is smallest so we write smallest integer and instead of less than or equal to we consider greater than or equal to x so this is the definition of ceiling function for example if i am interested in this ceiling function of 1.7 then i have to look to the right side of 1.7 I have to concentrate on integers which are to the right side of 1.7. So 1.7 is here, so I will concentrate on these integers 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now out of these integers, I have, I have to search for smallest integer which is 2. So ceiling function at point 1.7 has value 2 and if our point is integer then ceiling function will assign this same value. So this definition is very simple. The ceiling function assigns to the real number x the smallest integer that is greater than or equal to x. The value of the ceiling function is denoted by this. For example, if we are interested in the value of ceiling function at 3.4, then 3.4 is somewhere here. So we will look to the right side of 
there are infinite number of integers to the right side of 3.4 out of those infinite number of integers the smallest integer is 4 therefore ceiling function at 3.4 is equal to 4 suppose we are interested in the ceiling function at minus 2.3 then we concentrate here minus 2.3 and its right hand side so the integers to the right side of minus 2.3 are minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and so on and out of these integers the smallest integer is minus 2 so the value of ceiling function at minus 2.3 is minus 2 so in this way the ceiling function and floor functions are defined the floor function at any real number x equal to the greatest integer or the largest integer greatest integer less than or equal to x another notation for floor function is this one it is also known as the greatest integer function the ceiling function is denoted by this notation and it is defined as the smallest integer greater than or equal to x the smallest integer greater than or equal to x so we will require this uh, definition of ceiling function in generalized pigeon hole principle now the pigeon hole principle says that there must be at least two objects in the same box when there are more objects than the boxes so for example if i have k equal to 9 boxes and uh, if i have k plus 1 that is 10 or more objects then the pigeon hole principle says that there is at least one box which contains two or more objects in other words there must be at least two objects in the same box when there are more objects than the boxes however even more can be said when the number of objects exceeds a multiple of the number of boxes that is if we have k equal to 9 boxes and the number of objects are say 20 20 objects so this number of objects exceeds a multiple of the number of boxes uh, if we multiply number of boxes by 2 we will obtain 18 and this number of objects exceeds multiple of this uh, number of boxes so if we have this type of situation uh, we will apply generalized pigeon hole principle or we can apply generalized pigeon hole principle for any situation it is because simply generalization of pigeon hole principle so generalized pigeon hole principle says that if capital n objects are placed into k boxes then there is at least one box containing at least this ceiling function at capital n by k objects there is at least one box containing at least this number of objects this number is the value of ceiling function at this point number of objects divided by number of boxes so we understand this with the help of this example among 100 people at least how many of them were born in the same month so here the number of objects we can consider as n equal to 100 and we are asked to find out the number of people who were born in this same month and we know that there are 12 months in a year so we can consider number of boxes as k equal to 12 months and uh, from pigeon hole principle uh, we have to decide that how many people were born in this same month so we have to uh, decide the number of people such that at least uh, one month
contain those people or at least here we can understand there is at least one box containing at least n by k objects so instead of box we have month so we have to find out that uh, how many at least how many people will correspond to one month here we are asked to find out the number of people uh, we who were born in the same month so we can understand here in the language of this principle that if we consider capital n equal to 100 objects which are people here and uh, we consider number of boxes equal to 12 months then there is at least one box that is there is at least one month containing at least ceiling function of 100 by 12 objects that is 12 people so we uh, we can find out the number of people who were born in this same month by calculating the value of function ceiling function at this point 100 by 12 so that we have to write systematically here the number of objects is n equal to 100 or the number of people are 100 we have 12 months so we consider number of boxes as k equal to 12 100 people can have birthday in any of 12 months therefore that is this 100 people can be inside any of these 12 boxes so by pigeon hole principle there is at least one month that is box here containing at least ceiling function of n by k that is ceiling function at 100 by 12 100 by 12 is 8.3 and the ceiling function at 8.3 is equal to the smallest integer greater than or equal to 8.3 so here we have this type of situation 8.3 is somewhere here and uh, this is the smallest integer which is greater than 8.3 so the answer is 9 objects or 9 people. So in this way uh, we have decided that among 100 people there are at least 9 who were born in the same month. So this is nice application of generalized pigeon hole principle. We again understand pigeon hole principle says that if there are capital N objects and K boxes then there is at least one box containing at least this number of objects ceiling function of N by K objects in our example we have to decide that out of N equal to 100 people or objects how many of them were born in this same month so the number of boxes are equal to number of months so if we apply pigeon hole principle with these values of n and k then pigeon hole principle says that there is at least one box here box is month containing at least this number of objects that is 100 by 12 and we have obtained this as 9 people so there are 9 people who were born in the same month so in this way we can answer this type of questions related to counting using generalized principle generalized pigeon hole principle so this is all about this session I hope you like it. In upcoming lectures, we will discuss some more problems related to generalized pigeonhole principle. Thank